Oftentimes when we think about uh, why more boys than girls uh, um, enter STEM uh, fields of study and then occupations, uh, we think, well, it's because boys are better at math. Uh, or it's because boys are better at science, uh, but that actually is not manifestly true. What we do know from large-scale assessments, uh, such as assessments uh, uh, delivered to students uh, uh, near the end of compulsory schooling, uh, is that boys and girls perform at the same level in science uh, in the vast majority of countries, and in quite a few countries, uh, girls are actually performing at a higher level. So what it's not, it's definitely not an issue of uh, raw talent, and it's definitely not an issue of uh, aptitude. Uh, girls can do just as well as boys. Uh, however, both in their educational careers, so throughout primary school and then lower secondary schools, uh, what happens is that boys and girls uh, start to be exposed uh, to different stereotypes about uh, what it is uh, that boys and girls can do well. And as a result, uh, they develop very different uh, perceptions of themselves, their abilities, but also in terms of uh, what are the expectations uh, for them and the expectations they have for themselves. Uh, what we do know is that education can make a difference, uh, and in fact, uh, the role of uh, teachers uh, can very much uh, change stereotypes. Uh, it's very important to refine recruitment and selection process. Uh, job posting, for example, job posting uh, should be work on to encourage uh, women to apply. Um, my advice is uh, to use inclusive and biased and neutral gender language. It's the first step. The second step is interview. Uh, it's very important for interviewer and select committee uh, to be very um, focused to avoid unconscious bias. And company should be encouraged aspiration women. Aspiration women and train them not only for the present job, but for the future jobs. I'm actually an environmental physiologist by training. So you can have a very uh, scientific driven background and be in Sodexo. And I'd like to start off by saying that in Sodexo, it's not about men, it's not about women, it's about balance. Men in uh, business make women successful, women in business make men successful. And together, uh, we build stronger businesses. So first of all, we've got an organization or an, an activity called Sew Together. It's an advisory board for senior executives. We have 19 gender networks uh, throughout the world uh, to allow women to have a better networking activity within the company and outside of the company. And I'm personally the, uh, the sponsor of the French uh, gender network. Uh, we have a specific part of uh, Sew Together, our women's uh, group, which is uh, for FM, so more around engineering activities. Uh, we sponsor uh, a program called She Works, which is a job shadowing uh, scheme to introduce women to all the jobs we have in Sodexo, leadership programs, uh, certification programs. Um, but I think more than anything, uh, we believe fundamentally uh, that we need to be uh, gender balanced in everything that we do and that's the drive that we have to bring women along with us. Data science is a very vapor field. So 10 or 15 years ago, we were talking about mathematics, statistics, but not data science. So next step is artificial intelligence. So because the field is quite vacant, it's very flexible. And it's up to us to make the change, to make the difference. So we can shape what it will become 10 or 15 years from now. Um, another thing, I would also distinguish
studying in technology, studying in technical field for women, and and continue working in it. Um, the question and the problem is not only to attract women to universities and uh, educational programs to study a technical field, but also retain them in technology. Because um, at many points, we started losing women in business already. So they, they, they study, they get education, they get a degree, they start working, and then they disappear. To try? <laughs> um, I, I have one passionate belief, which is that we should try to have 100% female slates on hiring. Um, and it's a mathematical conundrum. We don't have enough women. We need to have more women, which means that we need to hire more women than men to be able to get to the end state mathematically. If we talk about STEM, it's a mathematical problem. And <coughs> when I'm often asked when I say this, that are you going to disengage men because it's not fair? And I can tell you when I talk to my teams and I discuss it with my teams and I do discuss it with my teams and I hire women, they know, and this is the essence of it, they know that for them to be successful, we need to have gender balanced teams. Their success depends on how many women we hire. And so that's why they're behind it. So that would be one tip. And the other one that I thought about, Francesca, listening to you about role models, I have two daughters who work in technology fields that didn't exist when I was uh, working. Um, and I was thinking, it's interesting because I don't think I was a good role model to my children. I don't think my children, my daughters would have wanted my life because I wasn't cautious enough about my work-life balance. And so I think if we want to be good role models, our companies have to be able to show that you can be a successful woman and still respect work-life balance, uh, children needs, children priorities, and the things that are real about the life that we lead and that we can still be women executives. So I'm gonna take that on as, a, as one of the things that we need to do.